the reason we want to talk about Belmont, Chris, you, you know this already, but Belmont is sort of our go-to cabinet line. We're big fans of Belmont. Um, I bet 75% of the people who come through our door uh, wind up uh, choosing Belmont for their kitchens. We do carry some other lines, but you know, we think Belmont's just got a lot of, a lot of benefits, a lot of bang for the buck. Um, Number one being that they're a frameless cabinet. So we'll talk today about what a frameless cabinet is and why we like frameless over a framed cabinet. Um, and then there are other companies out there that sell frameless cabinets. Um, so we wanna talk a little bit about why we would choose Belmont versus another company that sells frameless cabinetry. Uh, and then we'll get a little more into the details of Belmont and what they offer. They have a couple different lines under the Belmont brand and they have lots of different styles and finish options. So we'll, we'll finish up looking at some pretty pictures of kitchens um, that have been done with Belmont. Great. So starting out, why frameless? Uh, so we've kind of got these four points, Chris, that we think are, are good about frameless. You're obviously a fan of frameless cabinets yourself. Tell me what you like about frameless. Well, my personal hot buttons for frameless is that the fit and finish is a tighter, cleaner look when you get finished with it. It's the, um, the European style of small lines in between the doors and drawer fronts makes for a completed finished look that I think is far superior to what we do in the US market. Um, that plus the, you know, the trend of contemporary styles and transitional styles lend itself to the tighter look. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. The frameless look is a nice, clean, full overlay look. My my big thing with frameless has always been uh, storage. You know, you yeah. get that you get that extra five eight percent storage out of a frameless cabinet. You just don't get with a framed. Um, for people who aren't totally familiar with the difference, uh, we have a little diagram here. Uh, on the right is a framed cabinet. So this cabinet's been kind of disassembled. This right here, this middle gray frame is what we call the cabinet frame. It goes onto the cabinet box and then the door gets applied to the frame. On the left here is a frameless cabinet. There's no frame. This little gray frame doesn't exist. The door is attached right to the box. Um, what does that do for you? Well, that frame is an inch and a half thick generally, sometimes more. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one less. Um, so it actually reduces the size of that opening by an inch and a half once you attach it. So on each side. On, on each side, exactly. Yeah. So if you were to look at, uh, a, say, a cutaway picture of the side of a box, this is a framed cabinet again on the right. Because of that red frame, that drawer box can only be about three inches tall. The same size cabinet over here on the left with frameless, uh, that drawer box can actually be four inches tall. And whereas- It doesn't seem like much, but that's 25% higher. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, not only, and the depth is, is one thing that can make a difference. I don't know if anyone's ever tried to put like a large jar of spices in a top drawer and then figure out the drawer won't close. So sometimes that extra inch of height can make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. But then, then the width, even bigger difference. It's where you really win, I think, with frameless. You don't lose that space on the side. You can see this drawer box is a lot skinnier than this drawer box over here with frameless. And one of the things we like to demonstrate, we have this set up in our, this is our showroom here. So this gray box that we've put, this gray drawer box with a gray drawer front that we've put inside this other box, these two drawer boxes come from the same sized cabinet. It's just this one comes from a framed cabinet and it fits right inside the frameless cabinet. So you can see, and you can see the spacing here. It's a, it's a significant amount of storage that you're going to get, um, especially when you add it up over an entire kitchen. Like that one cabinet might not be significant, but by the time you add it up over an entire kitchen of, you know, 20 or even 30 cabinets, it makes a pretty big deal. Yeah. It's yeah. like you get a whole extra cabinet almost when you add yeah, it up. Basically. It's true. It's true. And the same thing applies to the space underneath the drawer as well, where you have the full width of the cabinet to be able to increase your storage capacity there. Down below. Yeah, exactly. 
uh, we like to refer to that as full access, where you, mm -hmm. you, you have things like rollouts or pullouts. They're also larger um, because you don't have that frame in the way. I mean, you have to have clearance for the hinge, as you can see here. You would need that on a framed cabinet too, but you'd have the frame, then you'd have the hinge, then you'd have the picture in there. Um, so I kind of like it. I also like the way that just the hinges for frameless cabinets, this is a bit technical, but you know, the quick release hinges that Belmont uses, yeah. you, you take the doors off, just two little buttons and you pop those doors right off. Uh, the six way adjustability of those hinges, is real nice. Well, and the adjustability is how you make that fit and finish look just perfect. That's right, yeah. So when he's, when Chris is talking about fit and finish, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're talking about these shadow lines that you see in between the cabinets. Right. Yeah. You know, you remember back in the 80s, they were complaining about how American cars, the hood didn't line up with the fenders very well. Uh -huh. <laughs> same detail here on cabinetry where those hinges being adjustable like that allow you to get all of the lines straight and square and just right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times you walk into a kitchen. If you're not a, you know, if you don't deal with kitchens every single day like we do, you can walk into a kitchen and you think it feels like something is off. Something, and oftentimes it's, these lines will be crooked. And you just don't directly notice it, but the back of your mind kind of notices it and it just feels a little sloppy. Yeah. That's With, like the first thing I noticed. Yeah, if you're a designer, <laughs> yeah, you, you walk in, you zero right in on it immediately. Yeah, uh, or if you're you remodel a the, kitchen. Yeah. The nice thing about it too is that you know over a period of time, if they need to be adjusted, it's a simple adjustment with a hand screwdriver that almost anybody can do. Yeah, that's right, and we'll use we usually show our clients how to do that. Uh, yeah. The uh, yeah, because all cabinets, you know, over a period of five, ten years, they're going to start to they get banged around, they're gonna sag a little, but with these little screw screw adjustments, you straighten them right back out. Uh, and here again is kind of what we're talking about. You can see this is a framed cabinet on the left, and you have all these gaps between the drawer fronts and doors. That's the reveal of that frame. Now this, it can be tighter than this. This is an extreme example. But when you look at a frameless cabinet here on the right, very tight, clean lines. So, I mean, big difference for me, night and day. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, in that previous slide, Paul had a nice example of the perfect lines lining up. This one right here. Yes, that smaller picture there on the left. Yeah, that close up of it looks like four drawers, drawer fronts coming together. That is an important finish to this look that makes, and you know, the Europeans perfected these style of cabinets years ago. Oh, yeah. And, most of the cabinets that come in from Europe are, you know, fifty, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollar kitchens. Right, right. It's the same technology that we use in our machines and our equipment to make it in here in Seattle. Right, at, at a much better price point. Yeah. We, Far we, better. Uh, yeah. I had a thought in my head, and it just, I just left me. It was going on something with that clean look. Yeah, but well, it's. It's frustrating because a lot of people don't know about it and they will pay the same price for that framed look and not know that frameless is out there and looks so yeah. much better. Yeah, it's interesting because we have framed cabinets in the showroom just to show people by contrast. I mean, we carry some framed lines. We can sell people framed cabinets if they really want them. But geez, we've had this showroom now for four years. I've never shown someone the difference between framed and frameless and had them pick the framed one, not once. Yeah. Once, I think once most people understand the difference, they're like, oh yeah, why would you want a framed cabinet? You get the same look, same style, you, you know, you, from a style point of view, uh, they can look identical, but you get more storage, the full access, the clean tight lines. Uh, yeah. I, well, I even go so far as to explain to people where the two styles of cabinets originated. Yeah. The main reasons the Europeans started building cabinets like they did, hence the Euro box or the frameless box, full mm -hmm. access, is because they don't have as many trees as we have here in North America. That's right. Yeah. And so our cabinet industry was using lumber to build cabinet face frames from the very beginning, and right. the Europeans didn't have that lumber to work with, so <laughs> they evolved. I'd also heard that it was partially as a result of uh, World War II as well. 
uh, so many factories have been destroyed in towns, and so they needed a way to ramp up production quickly. And by building a frameless cabinet, you're a, you know you're able to uh, build faster and get the you know get those factories up and running quicker. Yep, there's fewer processes. Yeah, exactly. Mm, uh, just a little bit more about the there's another. Another thing with frameless cabinets you don't really see in framed uh, are these lift up doors. Uh, Belmont has a whole bunch of different kinds of lift up doors that I really like. Um, you want to talk a little bit about lift up doors and pros and cons of those, Chris? You know what I love most about lift up doors? Anybody who's a cook understands that when you're standing at the stove and you're doing all of that stuff that goes on at the same time, you're stirring, you're mixing, you're seasoning, etc. I love the fact that you can lift up the doors on either side of the stove, leave them open, open them once, use all of the things in the cabinet, and then when you're finished, you close one door on each yeah. side. Yeah. You save so many steps of opening, closing, opening, and closing so when you can do this. And of course, we have various styles where they open up and stay up. Some of them go up over the top of the cabinet. Mm. Some of them are bifolds. And, you know, the cool detail like you have in your showroom is some of them can be motorized. So you touch it with your finger on the corner and the door opens automatically with a motor. It is so slick. Yeah, I think Brandon's got an uh, image of that coming up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's great for, like, people like me who are short, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> and wouldn't be able to reach up there Every and close it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we, we call that the servo drive, but it's a great detail also on something like a waste bin bas basket. So you can have a cabinet right. that you don't have to really do too much to open it. You yeah, just we touch do. It your knee and it opens, motorizes open. Yeah, we, we do a, uh, we've done those uh, touch to open trash cans uh, yep. a couple of times. They're nice. It's the one like servo drive. I, I've often, like my opinion about it has been like, it's a nicety, but it's sort of a, you know, it's nice to have, not a must have. But when you talk about something like a trash cabinet, it makes a, t a lot more sense because usually when you're trying to throw things in the trash, right. your hands are full of other stuff. It's nice to be able to, you know, kick that door, have it pop open automatically for you and then close automatically. Yeah, or that cabinet that you use that, like, is the one you use the most, like the trash. So it's going to get, like, more wear on it. So it's yeah. better to, like, not have to touch it. Especially after Thanksgiving, you've got a whole carcass that you're trying to dispose yeah, right. of. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, I've always tried to convince people when they're doing their kitchen over that they should accommodate all of the interior fittings that they look for or hope for right from the get-go. Because right. if you don't do it when you remodel your kitchen, you never come back and add those features back in. Yeah. Once and, everything's put in, put away, and you're back to normal, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to have the cutlery dividers and to have the waste bins under the counter and to have all those pullouts and things that make a kitchen so efficient and organized, mm -hmm. it's worth every amount of what it takes to get those in the beginning so that you'll have that pleasure of living with those features the whole okay. life in the cabinets. Yeah, you, you, it's a, it's a long-term thinking is what that is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to go back and retrofit those things back into a cabinet later. Yeah. It's one of the reasons we like to take our time in the design process and not rush. Cause if you slow down a little bit and think about those things, yep. they seem small now, but they really pay off kind of, you know, six months after your kitchen is done is when you kind of come to appreciate them. And they're like, man, I'm so glad I did that insert or I put that rollout over here or whatever. Yeah. Number one upgrade is rollout trays and base cabinets. Yeah. Yeah. We actually like to do uh, rollout trays. I like, we do a lot of drawers now instead. Like yeah. Here, here on the that's right. A, that's a strong design trend. Yeah. 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 Very, very big. The, uh, and then the rollouts, I don't know. If, I don't think we have a slide for it here, but one of the things that Belmont has in their tall cabinets that I love is their adjustable rollouts. Yes. Where you yeah. can very easily adjust the height of those rollouts without any tools. It only takes a couple of minutes. Um, we've had a lot of customers take advantage of that. And what's yeah. nice, we've had customers order extra rollouts because it comes with five, uh, which is a lot, but they have a bunch of small stuff. So they, we order a couple more and they wind up with seven. Uh, right. and they, they can adjust them all exactly the way they want them. 
uh, if a couple of years from now you decide, eh, I'm going to start storing bigger stuff in there, you just adjust them again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nice feature, but I don't think we put that in this presentation. We probably should have. That toolless adjustability is one of the most significant innovations I think I've seen in yeah. years. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's one of those ones. Belmont has a really great video for it on their in their online mm -hmm. catalog. And we show oh, that to almost yeah. everyone who comes in. And everyone's like, ooh, that's cool. That's yeah. the one that, you know, the the women are often the ones that are more into the kitchen design than the men. But we show that video. That's when the men light up and they go, oh, I like it. You know, yeah. Like they, they really get that. Um, here's a little example of servo drive. So another thing with these, these lift up doors, one of the reasons you don't see them on framed cabinets is you can look at the way the hardware installs, right? It has to install on the side of the box. If I put a frame in there, you know, it doesn't work. So that's why you don't see these on framed cabinets. It's just difficult. You can modify them to work with framed, but again, you're losing lots of lots of space and it's a little, little more awkward. Uh, but this just has a motor in it. And then you can kind of see Brianna put this video on the right hand side here. That's uh, automatically opening. If you look at my picture, that same cabinet is right behind me. Like you can just barely see it. Yeah, just see the bottom. Closing behind me. The camera is not quite set up enough. Um, but that's called a bifold lift up, kind of one of my favorite cabinets. Yes. And again, that's the one that. If you open it up, you leave it open until you're finished, and then you close it once. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then underneath here we've got our appliance garage. That's got a in the showroom. It's got our coffee and stuff in it. Yeah, the they trend come with for, a remote. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. The the trend, you know, for cleaner looks and kitchen style today. You know, everybody wants things behind doors, and they want them in their right. places, organized. That that's what it's all about. Yep. Yeah, clear counters, no mess. Um, all right, so that's a little bit about frameless cabinetry and why we like frameless. Um, we want to talk a little bit about why Belmont. So there's lots of companies that uh, do frame. Frameless is becoming more well understood, well known, well more popular in the United States. Um, but Chris, tell me a little bit about why someone might choose Belmont cabinetry over another frameless option. Well. 11 years ago, I started working with Belmont and I chose them because the owner who is last name is Bell mm -hmm. still runs the factory and his two sons are operating now as sales and uh, manufacturing uh, vice, excuse me, CEOs. And to me, when you've got an owner operated plant with his name on every cabinet, there's a different kind of pride that goes into what you do than these big conglomerates that make a billion cabinets a year. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most important fundamental things with, and that's my reason for being with Belmont. It's I got you. Um, second of all, this is all they've ever done is doing the Euro or the frameless construction. That's all they've done. That's They've become world-class experts on how to do it and how to incorporate all the features and all the things that people are looking for in today's world. Um, that that's not so common. There's not that many right. companies that produce frameless cabinets on a national basis in the right. U.S. Um, we have, you know, the ability because of our system. They're they're probably the single most progressive manufacturer in the United States from a technology standpoint. And it starts with the design software that you work with in your showroom. And then it moves in from there to their system. And that feeds right into our equipment down on the shop floor, which allows us to offer free modifications to height, width, and depth with no charge. That's right. Because they've automated the process, it doesn't cost us anything. So that's unheard of in the industry. Modifications have always been, a, you know, additional charge. Right. So that's something that, you know, makes a big difference. But really, it's also about the breadth of what their product range encompasses. They have more than one product range. They have a good, better, best type of scenario. They have uh, many, many options. We have all of our online processes. We do everything through the company portal from ordering literature, to color chips, to sample doors to kitchen. All communications go through our online portal. And they're like, 
so far advanced in that respect, I have more information available to me as a sales representative than any factory I've worked with in the history of my career. Yeah. Yeah, they really set the standard when it comes to their their online catalog and their am- online portal. It's that's it is yeah no one compares to that really it makes it very hard to like anything else (laughs) you know how hard it was for us to tell people we're not printing catalogs anymore (laughs) yeah i bet (laughs) that was a hard sell that was a hard sell now it's normal people who are wondering what we're talking about um i'll show you belmont's uh, online catalog here so we use this obviously with all of our clients. But so Belmont's catalog is actually online. It's like, it's like a website um, and it's an interactive website with videos and tons of information. So if you wanna look at cabinetry, actually let's look at that uh, P car we were talking about. So if, you know, if I wanna look at a tall cabinet, here's all, this, all the information, all the specifications, there's a little diagram, all the door heights, um, images of the cabinet like all this information is built in super easy to find here's the little video can you guys see the video yeah mm-hmm. mr john here are those Just a little choppy. Yeah. But you get the gist of it. Yeah. No yeah. tool required. It takes yeah. just a moment. Yeah, to... so that you do. If we want more construction details, there are these hyperlinks so we can see things in more detail. It's a huge help. I don't think it's difficult because from a you know a homeowner point of view, you're just shopping for cabinets. But when you're shopping for a kitchen and you've got a, your designer has a tool like this to design that kitchen, it's a, it's a, it's a hidden benefit. It's a big benefit as a, as a homeowner, you just might not realize it. So Belmont's done just a fantastic job with that. Uh, I like the fact too, that you can put personalized notes on your catalog yeah, to, you right. know, things that you find out fresh all the time. Yeah. You log into the catalog. So Brianna's notes can be different from my notes and, and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I think you hit a lot of the great things about Belmont. We, we obviously, we love their, their customer service, they've always been great. Um, the shipping has always been gone. Like when they say, we're gonna have our cabinets on June 14th, you know, in the afternoon, we get them June 14th in the afternoon. Like if the, the shipping timing has been really good for us. Um, again, from a designer's point of view, being able to do free size changes in quarter inch increments, like you said, hard to beat. Um, and then I do like anyone who specializes in a thing is always going to get my business. You know, there are a lot of other companies that do frameless, but they all started out as framed cabinet companies, traditional American framed cabinet companies. There's nothing wrong with that, but now frameless is more popular. So they've branched out, but there's so many differences between framed and frameless. It's just, it's the mindset. It's very difficult to switch back and forth between the two. And so they always wind up making small mistakes. You know, they don't offer all the lift up door styles because for them that, that they just don't quite understand why that's a benefit for frameless. They just don't understand the, inc- the real intricacies inc- of it, whereas Belmont does. I like how Belmont, you know, flies to Europe every year to go to Kachina and these other shows to see what's new, what's cutting edge. They're always bringing new stuff over, um, you know, that focus on frameless and what frameless can do is, you know, it, it, it really makes them stand out above the crowd. Well, and you know, all of our cues come from Europe now. We're usually two to three years behind Europe in terms of style trends. Sure. And Belmont is jumping over and bringing those trends to America two to three years faster. So we're usually ahead of the curve and we get slower starts, but right. we're the ones who bring it first. Right, but yeah, you're ahead of the game, which I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they do. You know, another thing I like with you know Belmont's got their 1600 line, their 1900 line, which we call better and best. Um, the nice thing about 
them both being under the Belmont brand is the door styles cross over. So we will often design a kitchen in their 1600 line, which is a, you know, it's a lower cost, a value oriented line, but there's a few cabinets in the higher cost line that we really want in that kitchen, or we can incorporate them, we can mix and match and the door style is all the same. So you, you, you don't know the difference. And that way you're able to lower the cost of a kitchen, but still get those higher end cabinets you want where they're most important to have them. Um, well, and, and 1600 started quite a few years ago as what we called an entry level price product. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to give us something to be competitive in the marketplace. But what they've done over the years is they've evolved it out. So it's a fully fleshed out line that stands alone all by itself. It's, yeah. it's, it's got more features than most companies ever hope to accomplish. And then, you know, from 1600, which is derived from 16 millimeters, which is five eighths. That's the thickness of the material we make right. the box out of. Then the 1900 moves you into a three quarter inch material. And the 1900 is basically more custom, more fully featured. They give you things like if you want mahogany, we're not going to be able to offer that in an entry level product line like 1600, but we do it in 1900. If you want walnut, you've got to go to 1900. That's it's right. the the better caliber products and materials are going to be available in that broader right line. And 1900 is still in the lower part of its price range is still in the same range as 1600 at the high end. So it's not that big of a leap. That's right. And yet you get more door styles, more wood species, more finish options, more modifications, more drawer box options. It, the list goes on and on. It's just infinitely larger of a product range. A lot of customizing, get a lot of features out of that line. And then Vero, they have this this third line, uh, Vero, which we kind of consider as a, it's a unique, it's a standalone sort of cabinet line. Very, very contemporary, very Euro design. Uh, we'll show you guys some pictures in a, in a little bit here. Um, so this isn't, we don't really consider this good, better, best. It's sort of, we consider 1600 better. 1900 best. We have another line here in the showroom that we use for good. Um, and then Vero is sort of a standalone if you just really want that uber contemporary design. Mm -hmm. uh, but Chris really sort of ran through some of this already. The 1600, um, a lot of times the difference between good, better, and best, most of the time, what it really comes down to is options. Like our good cabinet that we have here in the showroom, I stand by it 100%. It's a it's a well-built cabinet that will last you for years and years and years. 1600, same, great cabinet. I have no hesitation recommending it. All of our cabinets, we've, we fully stand behind. Why one costs more than the other, really it comes down to options, right? Mm -hmm. Number of door styles and colors and drawer box options and organizer options and all the different flexibility you have from a design point of view. Uh, and so that's really true with 1600 and 1900 too. Uh, one of the main differences between why one costs a little less than the other is the number of design options and flexibility you have. Correct. Um, whoops. So we consider 1900, it just has more design flexibility, more customization. So you can see in 1900, we have seven, 70 different door styles. In 1600, you've got 34 different door styles, as an example. Some of the colors available in 1900 aren't available in 1600. Uh, some of the finishes and things like that. Yeah, I mean, you've multiplied the number of door styles by the number of wood species times the number of finish options. Mm -hmm. It's endless. <laughs> yeah. endless options. Yeah. With, with 1600, if you look at a 1600 door, what you see is what you get. They'll have like their icon door. That's the way that door is going to look. You can't modify it. With 1900, everything about that door is you can modify. You can change the edge profile. You can change the panel. You can change the interior profile. So you can tweak everything to your exact, your exact taste. Change the, like if the drawers are styled or not. Yeah. So just a lot more flexibility. Um, 
so this is Vero. This is a Vero kitchen here. Um, tell Chris, tell us a little bit about Vero and, and why it's so unique. The first time I went to Euro Cucina, the show in Milan, was in 2016. And there were over 700 manufacturers in Milan showing kitchen cabinets. I would bet that I only saw two kitchens throughout that entire show that had handles to open the doors with. Right. Oh, wow. The whole trend was to go with no hardware on the doors and drawer fronts. So they have developed this system where you can build channels behind the doors and drawer fronts, yeah, allowing awesome. your fingers to go in and behind the drawer or behind the door and open it with your fingertips that way. And that trend is now hitting the U.S. over the last 12 to 18 months. We've started to see a rise in people asking for cabinets with no handles. Now, if I were some of the big names in the uh, hardware manufacturing business, I would be a little nervous about such a thing. <laughs> <Not here> really. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, the trend out of Europe, and it usually is two to three years before it hits the U.S. shores, and yeah. it's, that's what Vero is. It is a completely different style of contemporary, and you can only do it in the contemporary door styles, the slab drawer fronts and doors. Yeah. But um, it also imposes some limitations because the channels that are cut into the ends of the cabinets before you finish them limit where you can move anything. So you are reducing the number of modifications. However, you know, in a true contemporary style kitchen, unlike a traditional kitchen where you put a base cabinet below a wall cabinet that is the same width and you just mm -hmm. redesign horizontally in contemporary. That's right. And that contemporary style lends itself to fewer modifications. You don't have very many modified cabinets. They're just, it's, it's a simpler overall look. And so it's, it works very nicely. It's, it's coming on very strong now to have no handles. Some instances it's no wall cabinets, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. This is a, I refer to this as the most European looking kitchen made in America. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we well, got, we even quoted that right here. I like the, uh, it's a 1900 cabinet dressed up in an Italian suit. Yeah. <laughs> like that yeah there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My kitchen doesn't have any uppers. I have a, my cabinetry is traditional, but uh, at the moment, anyway, until <laughs> Brianna gets to take a crack at it. Yeah. For me. Um, but I don't have any uppers. in the suit. And I love it. <laughs> So yeah, that's definitely a strong trend. The, uh, we've done a little bit of Vero. You know, we're in the South. It's a pretty traditional culture down here in general, but we're still seeing yep. it slowly but surely. Like, I think you're right. It's, it's definitely coming on. Uh, well, and you're seeing it more in all of the media. You see it on movies. You see it in Howes and Pinterest and all these places that are talking about interior design and whatnot. And you look for it and you'll realize it's a very strong feature that's it's and it's appealing now to people of all different age groups it's not limited yeah. to younger people yeah that's right we've i when we opened this showroom we decided to specialize in frameless cabinetry um i really thought our audience would skew younger because of that choice um but it really hasn't i've been really surprised uh, how many of our older clients still want a contemporary i mean you can do a traditional design with 1600 1900 but they actually want the modern design or an industrial design or something a little sleeker um, too yeah the care is easier too yeah, a little yeah easier just because care. of the finishes and just not yeah. having to clean so here's it. a little close-up of a bureau kitchen these are those channels chris was talking about it's a little hard to see but those are actually aluminum channels so they're very durable and you just reach in and grab those poles or, or reach in and grab that door to open it you know, I, I think one of the things that appeals to people about a contemporary kitchen is that when you step into it and the counters are clear and everything's in its place and the drawers are all have organizers, etc., you feel as though you have a bit more control over your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, life yeah. is so chaotic these days that a little bit of peace and serenity in your kitchen 
goes yeah. a long way to, you know, That's smoothing so your, yeah. your when you don't have that countertop clutter, yeah, and it's nice. Yeah. And clean. yeah, it feels a little soothe, a little calmer. I like, you know, that's sort of our whole thing with kitchen design. Yeah. Like, you know, your kitchen should be designed so it makes your life easier. Yeah. You, know, you should be at the stove and just be able to reach right to your right and grab what you need. You should be at the fridge and be able to put your groceries away without running all over the kitchen. And that, yep. that, that minimal design, like a contemporary design, forces you to – so get those details right so that it can have a clean look, but everything can still be right where you yeah. want it. That's why I love design so much because my quality of life is like extremely impacted by the space yeah. around me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an interesting thing, a kitchen. Um, it's probably a room in the house, the only room in the house that has an emotional attachment in people's minds mm -hmm. um, you know i think i've told you the story about doing my sister's kitchen up in new england 15 years ago she had four kids she was married to a minister they had this little house that was in such rough shape that they had a curtain underneath their sink mm -hmm. <laughs> look down through the floor of the kitchen and, the <laughs> and she finally got into a little bit of money and she called me up and asked me if she I'd help her do her kitchen mm. and we got her some cabinets and I flew up there my wife and I installed the cabinets for her and when she sent me a thank you note a month later she said you've really changed the self-esteem of our home okay and it's such an important room I mean in all my years I have seen many many examples of women crying about cabinets you know, they're building a new house and the cabinets, something happens, they come in with a damaged part or the, I had one came in, it was the customer ordered it the entirely wrong color. Ugh. But the crying, I don't think they ever cry about a roof or about windows. Yeah. Right. But boy, <laughs> cabinets are an important part of the house. Yeah. And it's a very emotional room that we are working in when we're working yeah. in people's kitchens. Paul, what was it that we just had a client who um, named their kitchen after a cookbook that they bought? I can't remember the name uh, of it, but uh, it was, was like Jubilee or something. And I think it was Jubilee. It was yeah, they cool. loved it so much that they the named their that. kitchen. I thought that was cool. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. neat. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, but it, it is. Really this changes is lives. <laughs> Yeah. So one, I want to call it a myth about frameless cabinets that we fight a lot uh, is it has to be contemporary, um, which, uh, it, which isn't true. Um, you know, you do all kinds of styles with it. It does skew a little contemporary just because it's a Euro, it come, you know, it's a Euro design, um, but you can do a lot of traditional looks with it. Uh, oh yeah. Belmont has a look for any kind of category in the industry from traditional to transitional to contemporary. And, you know, this panel that you're showing now, these multi-level finishes, you know, back in the early two thousands, every home was getting these multi-level finishes. It's all the rage. Yeah. Yeah. And fluted fillers and corbels and large stacked crown moldings and all of that story kind of look was very strong. It still still sells to certain brackets and certain demographics today, but yeah, it's, it's definitely less it's less popular but still around. But totally yeah. totally possible with frameless. You know, the door yeah, style is it independent. It makes it a little more modern, contemporary to do a frameless cabinet this way than if yeah. you're in a frame yeah. and do the multi finish. Yeah, you still get it's a traditional door style, but you still get the tight, clean lines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. Come with frameless, so it's almost like a, you know, it's just a higher end look with that traditional style. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that middle door that you're showing there is a brush stroke glazing. Is you know, there, one? There's not the middle one, yes. And brush stroke glazing is a very beautiful finish to put yeah. on. A traditional cabinet. Yeah, yeah. We just did a kitchen with uh, that brush stroke glaze on it. It's beautiful. Yep. Um, you know, with frameless cabinetry with Belmont, you can do stains and all kinds of different wood species. Um, 
So you're not limited, but you can do alder. Like you said, there's mahogany, there's walnut, there's alder, there's maple, there's oak, there's rift oak. There's all, so all the wood species are there. Tons of different stain colors are there. Belmont will even do distressing. Um, you can do custom paint colors too. They do custom paint colors if you want to. You can choose anything out of the Sherman Williams catalog, basically, and we can we can match that color. Up to eighteen hundred different color options in that Sherman Williams fan deck. That's too many. Yeah, <laughs> too many. <laughs> we'll stick to the hundred or so of the standard ones at Belmont. Yeah. White and gray. White and gray. White and gray. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But if you, uh, but you know. We have once or twice had a client who just, you know, had a very specific color in mind and, you know, that's totally possible. Um, but something that frameless can do that you don't see in framed are these laminate doors, uh, yes. which can come in a shaker style or they come, mostly they come in this sort of slab style door, uh, really becoming popular. I mean, I know they're very popular south of us here in Florida and they've been popular out west for a while, but even now here in, in what they call the deep south, North Florida, South Georgia, really starting to become very, very popular because of their durability and look. Well, and you know, the, this, is, this is an example of what we call TSS. And it's a <clears throat> textured melamine is what I refer to it as. Mm -hmm. The Italians developed this over the last five to 10 years. And it's, it's a really cool process where they're able to emboss a surface texture into the melamine. And then they've come up with beautiful, beautiful high definition coloring systems so that these things look as good as real wood without the maintenance, without the cost, without the challenge of you know, finishing. And they are absolutely stunning. Belmont now buys all of these from a mill in Milan and that facility, because we're one of their few customers that buys direct, we have 34 or 35 color options in that product. Yeah, I don't That's know anyone cool. that offers as many laminate options as Belmont does. It's great. Yeah. No Definitely one. Definitely have the nicest options too. Yeah. yeah. Um, door styles with Belmont, lots of different door styles. We talked mm -hmm. about 34 different in in 1600 and 70 some odd different styles in 1900. Um, but some pretty sort of standard door styles here. We've got a raised panel, a recessed panel. This is what this is that slab door we talked about. And then two different kinds of construction, both available in Belmont. A mitered corner, where you see that angled joint in the corner. Mm -hmm. And then what's called a cope and rail, which I like. I like the cope and rail. I think Brianna's told me before she likes the yeah, I think you guys have like changed me though. I'm going oh, yeah. with open rail. You swung you over to our side? All right. Yeah, yeah. The more I, I see, I uh, just because usually the miter has a thicker, um, thicker style and rail. Yeah, style and rail. So it's not. Yeah, I usually I don't like this, that as much. This, yeah, this bit is usually thicker on a miter cabinet. Yeah. Not always, but a lot of times. Uh, and then this is a unique door. Uh, that you kind of, you see a lot south of here, like the Bahamas and stuff, or maybe in Hawaii, this louvered cabinet door. Yeah, um, that's a true louver. Yeah, well, Belmont yeah. does both, right? They do a true louver, uh, and they do what's what you know, a, sort of a fake louver that's a little bit less expensive than sixteen hundred. Right. But you you can get the true louver, which is, I mean, if you need a louvered door, you want a true louver because you want that ventilation in these hot, humid climates. But yeah, so tons of options in Belmont. Um, here's a couple of traditional kitchens. Uh, these are these are frameless. These come right out of the Belmont catalog, right? Mm -hmm. I dig the uh, the dark walnut centerpiece around the range there. Although I got to tell you, I hate seeing yeah, that. Yeah, no, you don't. It's my one of my biggest pet peeves. Yeah. This is this gorgeous. It's a huge. Must be like a 36 or 42 inch range. And look, they've got nine inches of counter space next to their rain that yeah. that just drives me crazy you know i mean like, i guess though you know since like you know, a normal range is like 30 you kind of do have that extra space there like you yeah. couldn't have a 30 with nine inches on I'm each gonna, side i'm not gonna put my plate on the rain on, yeah on the rain yeah that's true i but. just i mean i get it's pretty it just drives me crazy that you've just built in a functional problem into that kitchen for the yeah. next 20 years, you know, and you can do, you can make it pretty and not have that problem. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just sort of, you're, I mean, I get sacrificing, you know, function, form for function. I'm not a huge fan of doing that. I think kitchens are function first and then you layer on the beauty. Um, so I, it, it bugs me to see. That's, anyway, I'll get off my soapbox on that. Bri Brianna's, <laughs> Brianna's heard that from me probably half a dozen yeah. times. Yeah, so, but I understand. Uh, so that's your traditional look uh, that you got there. Transitional, super popular, you know, farmhouse style, recessed panel doors, a cleaner look, but still with traditional elements, uh, real popular. And then the nice thing about Belmont, they can also do the uber modern look. Yeah. yeah. One of the ways you can fix that problem with that hood there, Paul, is to not bring it all the way to the counter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it would be very easy. And that would eliminate that and still give you that hearth look. Yeah. Yep. yeah. A lot of, like now, a lot of people are doing, at least they like recessed it back like halfway. A little bit, yeah. Counter depth, yeah. But some people are doing like full sides, full depth, and yeah. that's I've really not. I've seen a lot of super expensive kitchens designed. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing about super expensive kitchens, though, is it very well could be that they never cook in that kitchen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of those kitchens are really just for looks. Yeah. If they're really well, if you're broke, all they make in that kitchen is reservations. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or they have a separate kitchen where someone's making them food. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That's a crazy trend where now people have second kitchens where yeah, you yeah. do all the cooking in the second kitchen and the main kitchen is really just for serving and, and for looking pretty. Now, I know this for a fact. That's a, tr a traditional Italian style house. This one here? In, in New England, when I lived up there, the Italians would have their pretty kitchen on the entry level of the street. Mm -hmm. And the working kitchen was downstairs in the cellar, basically. Yeah. And it also helped keep the house warm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, they'd have a three-story house and the heat would flow upwards. So it was, that you would often sell them two kitchens. Yeah, there's I mean, a, a historic home in the, town where I'm from and they have the kitchen as a whole separate building and you like walk through a small yeah. hallway to get to it. That's interesting. They don't have a kitchen in the house at all. Yeah, that makes sense. The, this, this kitchen here on the left, we actually have this kitchen, uh, a picture of it hanging on the wall here in the showroom. It's actually ha hanging on the outside uh, of the showroom. And I bet once or twice a quarter, people literally walk in the door and they go, I want that kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely popular. Can they just walk in and go, that one, that picture that's out there, I want that. And that's they're done. But it's got all the popular elements that, that are that are around today with the recessed panel and the white, the light count, the quartz countertops and all that good stuff. And you notice it's got plenty of counter space on either side of the hood. It does have yeah. enough. It does have enough counter space on either side of the stove. I personally wouldn't do a pot filler. I'm not a fan of those, but the uh, I do love what? the. Uh, you don't like a pot filler? Not if not in a kitchen where your sink is only a step away. Yeah. Okay. If it was a really big kitchen. Yes, I see. Yeah. The, I see the reason for it, but uh, but you know, hey, if you want one, people, we'll do one for you. No yeah. judgment. I feel like we're like a big pot that's heavy makes it just easy. Yeah, if you do, if you boil a lot of pasta or something, yeah. like that, it is nice to be able to fill it right there. But then you still got to dump it at some point. You still yeah. got to grill it later. Yeah, you should have like a siphon feature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe maybe you should invent that, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then the uber modern look. I wouldn't call it uber modern, but the modern look is is coming on strong. We're seeing down here more glossy cabinets, more requests yeah. for glossy cabinets. Definitely South Florida. That's South Florida, you see it everywhere, but even here in North Florida, we're starting yeah. to see cleaner but a lot. There's a demographic that, you know, younger people are looking for that urban lifestyle. They're not living in the suburbs. They want to live closer to the downtown where things are happening. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a demographic that started it, but it's starting to spread now. Here's, Here's something I like to see that you don't see very much is a recessed toe kick on the side of a peninsula. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very much. I don't know why, but I like that little recessed toe. Usually you see that's flush all the way to the floor and it becomes a place that people just kick all the time. Just gets kicked, kick, kick. It gets all beat up. I like that little recessed toe kick there. 
And then these are those long, these are these lift up cabinets, these metal framed cabinets right here, Chris, you were talking about. Yeah. That you just, you lift those two bad boys up and they stay open the entire time. You're cooking, cleaning, taking things out, putting things away. And then when you're all done, you just close those down. We do the doors up to 72 inches wide with a single door. I know. Yeah, it's awesome. But believe me, when, when, when the early stages of planning a kitchen remodel for my home, and I will for sure be having a couple of those in my kitchen. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Makes unloading the dishwasher easy too. You just right. have to open up that one long one and put everything in right. there. Yeah. And that's all we've got, Chris. I really appreciate you joining us today. Hey, it was a pleasure. I'm, I've always, I always get a kick out of these webinars because you know you get a lot of different ideas that pop out of them. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, we've, we've learned a few things from them. Hopefully people who watch them learn a few things from them. It's always good to, you know, kitchen design is all about, you know, knowledge and seeing what, seeing different options and you start to learn what you like. So hopefully that's presenting some opportunity for people to do that. And it's also knowing what works. That's right. That's where Brianna comes in. Yeah. yeah. Knowing what works. There's a lot of things that just don't work in, in bad design. Yeah. And good design is making it work and look pretty at the same time. I just, we have someone coming in the showroom tomorrow. I went and visited their home. They had, you know, ranges are 30 inches, standard size range. And someone designed their kitchen with a 29 inch opening for the range. And so they literally took a saw and cut the plastic parts of the range out so they could fit this range in and then these people these people came along and they bought the house and they were in the kitchen and they're like they want to get new appliances and they can't you know just one of those silly, silly so, bad. so weird yeah <laughs> this same house i think i was telling brianna this same house they granite countertops they made uh trivets out of granite which is great. You know, you put felt pads on the bottom of it and you can have this little cheese board, a little granite trivet, but this couple, for whatever reason, they glued the trivet to the countertop. Right next, one, one right next to the sink and one right next to the range. And that's, it's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah. these people bought the house and they're like, they're like, what is this? And I'm like, Oh, it looks like a cheese board. I was like, you don't have to use it. And like we do, it's glued down. And I was like, it's not glued down. And I went and grabbed it and it was building, it was glued down. <laughs> uh, but, well, I knew a guy once who had a pantry under his wife, the stairs in his wife's kitchen. And he had taken a tree limb from out of the yard and hung her pots and pans on it. Nice. So there's all kinds of crazy things that people do in their kitchen that need yeah. to be remodeled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These, these days you might be able to sell that tree limb on Etsy for a couple hundred bucks. You don't know. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, I hope we get to see you up here in Tallahassee soon. Uh, I know restrictions are slowly starting to lift and you're starting to travel. So hopefully that means we'll, we'll see you up this way. Yeah. We'll be up there soon. Yeah. Give us a shout. Um, again, appreciate you coming by. I think I'm muted. Oh, you muted yourself. Oh. Give me a shout and, you know, I look forward to seeing everybody. Awesome. Thanks, yeah, Nice talking to you. Okay. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.